Hey everyone, so I thought I'd do a quick video on my uh, simple DIY worm and castings, compost, whatever you want to sift, I guess, machine. Um, I was looking online and what they want for some of these machines is crazy. So for a cheap drill and a bunch of 1x4 and some screen that you can get at your local hardware store, I think I'm less than $100 into this. Uh, anything you see in tin was cardboard or uh, um, I used a foam board to mock all this up and that worked great for a long time but I have access to tin and I like doing sheet metal work so here I am. Uh, if you got someone handy maybe someone or yourself can, can match it but uh, that chute is removable via two sheet metal screws so I can move it from chute to chute and you'll see why here in a little bit but uh, all of this is just hardware cloth brought at your local hardware store that is a quarter inch square that's three sixteenths round. That one's important for ENC harvesting. Each one serves a different purpose depending on whether you're harvesting casting, separating worms, or cocoons, depending on what you want to do. So depending on how I stack these is how I achieve what I want to get. So this is quarter inch, no, excuse me, that's eighth inch square. And then this is that uh, very fine bug screen. I think that's like 16th inch, but it's just your typical bug screen that's the very fine stuff for the very fine castings so what operates this mechanism is uh what i did was i cut out a hole saw i used a hole saw to make that out of a two by four and then off center i drilled another hole so it's got a cam action that's three eighths threaded rod it's also available at any hardware store um nuts and washers to keep it where I want it. And you'll notice there's a brass bushing in between there just to protect the wood and keep it lasting longer. And then the only thing holding this is these are pinched really tight. So there is no teeth or anything digging in there. And I'm kind of glad because if I have something too tight or I put too big of a load on it, that's the first thing that starts to slip. And I'd rather that slip than this thing self-destruct in any other way so that's worked out well uh 16 inches wide 34 inches long outside to outside and then obviously both shoots are tapered to the middle where the fines are collected i'll turn it on quick just so you guys can see that action and what that does is that pushes up and down on this bracket which is just your basic Bracket you can buy at any hardware store. Nothing fancy there. And that's what rides up and down on that and creates my bouncing motion. So each one of these has that because there are times I run each one of these individually and it's just a very easy modular setup. You'll notice different screws in different places. Those are to stack and to put, uh, I use a spring here hold them down because if I'm only running one layer it gets kind of bouncy if it's just like that bug screen um, panel it'll get kind of bouncy on me and that just keeps everything contained and bouncing the way I want it to just a lot of little things that fine-tune and it once you get it there it works really well so the drill speed is kept by a hose clamp around the uh, trigger there to speed it up I tighten it with a nut driver to slow it down I, I loosen it but um, I do recommend plugging it into a power strip so you can just turn it on and off because once you get it set, it's really nice to just turn it on or off there. And the fine tuning gets old, but once you get it, it's nice. The bucket there is just a heavy bucket to keep this thing from walking into the next room when I'm running it. Um, height adjustment, just move those up and down, screw it where you need it, put some marks so it's even. Sometimes putting it off kilter a little bit helps to move things the way you want to. It's just from experience, you'll see a little piece of foam there I put there at one time just to, to offset the one corner. It's just whatever works for you. But I've got hours on this thing. And once you get started doing this, and all of a sudden you start producing castings, these, these things just don't cut it anymore. I mean, there's, there's more important things in life to, to do than just sit here and sit castings all day. And honestly, I enjoy building things like this that make it a lot more efficient and easy for me to do it. I do have a, um, like a feeder bucket 
thing that I put on top of this. And it's just a, a bucket basically with a metered um, discharge on the side that I can slide up or down. And then as this bounces, it will sit there and bounce it out of my bucket and onto the tray. So I can fill that bucket and walk away for 15 minutes and, and come back and refill it. And I'll have to worry about it. So I will set this up to do a little demonstration and then uh, show you how this thing works. And we'll go from there. Thanks. You'll notice here, there's a screw here, same on this side. That rests up against here and keeps it from sliding forward and then down. That's literally all there is to it. Now, if I was running just this tray, I would hook this spring up to the screw again to keep it from getting bouncy, like uncontrollably bouncy where castings are just flying all over. But once you add a second layer, you don't need to worry about that. But then I use the spring to tie it. Well, I could probably do it here, but I usually do it on the back. To tie the two together, I'll do it on the back like I normally do. But you get the idea. It's just to keep things together. And there I go. I'm ready to roll. So what I have now is I have three stages. I'll get my super fines, my next stage, and my next stage. So most of my worms and um, the large run process will go into that bin, my cocoons and finer material will go in there, and then my ultra fines should go in here. And that's all based on how you stack it. But right now that's kind of the way it's set up. Usually it's either this one or this one is in the middle and vice versa. So if I'm running my reds or blues and stuff like that, it's mainly this one. This size works great for ENC if you have big, big ENC because their cocoons are just much easier to harvest when they're really big. And that's been a, a key to, or a trick to being successful with ENC is maintaining a large breeding stock. But that's for another video for another time. Um, this guy, so just some tabs that fold down, nothing fancy there, so experimenting with different class. Do what works for you. Um, but this just sits on top. And I built this because the valuable real estate underneath of it, I want to keep open for the material that I actually want to sift through it. This is kind of so I can break up the cardboard and the big stuff and get them off the table before it ever enters the lower trays because I want that to actually be sifting and not plugged up with bigger stuff that's not going to end up in, the, in my buckets that I'm after. So, and that was worked really well. So it's kind of been like a pre thing and I can get the worms off quicker, especially the big worms. I can grab my little brush here and work things out so they don't have to go through the different chambers and it, it works really well. But for demonstration purposes, I don't need it. I'm not gonna run it. So I will turn it on here quick so you guys can see the action from the back and how this works see my springs and you'll see it'll walk forward a little bit when I when I turn it on and I just let it get where it wants to be and, and then run it again uh, it's resting against a bucket there otherwise it, it will start to walk away there's other ways to do it but it works for me so you can see it's all it is it's a bit noisy but the thumping action works really well for for clearing out the screens and keeping it from plugging up and, and moving things along what you want to do. So I'll run it here. I'll run a little sample and uh, show you it working for a little bit. And
the more you move through there, the better it works, especially once everything's full and flowing. It, you're really churning through some material really quick. So super fines. A little bit less. Then you got your big stuff and, and your worms. I think there was, I did see some worms on this. Yeah, there's some. It's just stuff I was getting from cleaning up around the CFTs over there, so I wasn't sure what to expect in that. But uh, yeah, there you go. I'll run it a little bit longer, get the rest of that sifted through. But hopefully, this gives some people some ideas and saves them some money because goodness gracious. I mean, nothing some one by four and some screen and a cheap drill can't do that some of those really high dollar ones are doing. It. That's just nuts. But uh, the better drill, the better it works. I will say that just as far as getting it fine tuned, because those cheap drills, it seems like it's either on or off. And if they don't have a speed dial on them or something like that to tone it down, it can be kind of tricky. But again, this thing has just saved me hours and hours of work. So hopefully it'll do the same. and for someone else and get someone else some ideas to do the same. Uh, more videos to come on the worm stuff. I didn't realize more people wanted it, but I guess uh, I experienced it, the lack of good information. So I think I'm going to start posting some. So hopefully you'll subscribe for those and uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks guys.